So I will introduce Keller Easterling. Keller Easterling is an architect. She is one of the most eloquent theorists, I think, of such syntaxes as they are conjugated at the urban scale. Keller Easterling is an architect and professor at Yale University. Her most recent book, Extra Statecraft, The Power of Infrastructure, examines global infrastructure uh, networks as a medium of polity. Another recent book, Subtraction, considers building renewal or how to put the development machine in reverse. And before I ask Keller to come on, can I ask those in the back to, to, to lower the volume on the conversations or to take them into the courtyard so that we can hear the, uh, as well? Otherwise, we'll turn up the speakers really fucking loud and it won't matter anyway. But before, the, let me inter my friend, introduce Keller Easterling, please. Thanks, Ben. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Well, it's been a privilege to be in conversation with the projects that you've been seeing. Um, because in my work, I'm often looking with half-closed eyes at the urban world, focusing on buildings with shapes and outlines, but also on the matrix of rules and relationships in which those buildings are suspended. And in contemporary experience economy, that matrix is made up of repeatable formulas or spatial products, the skyscrapers, malls, golf courses, resorts, franchises, parking lots, airports, ports, free zones. And these almost infrastructural rules and relationships are not like an infrastructure of pipes and wires hidden under the ground, but more like a very visible and enveloping urban medium or spatial technology. Oh, thanks. And this technological matrix is arresting not only because of its wild mixtures of violence and candy-colored fairy tales about Arnold Palmer golf and Beard Papa cream puffs, but also because this spatial matrix of infrastructure space is rapidly 3D printing a new layer of the Earth's crust. Still, as unlikely as it may seem from looking at this promotional porn, matrix space might bring to design another relevance as well as another set of aesthetic pleasures and political capacities, an expanded repertoire for both form making and political activism. It's medium design, but it's not what you think. It's not new, it's not right. It's not magic, it's not free, it doesn't happen, it doesn't always work. And if it really is not what you think, maybe medium design begins with the rearrangement of neurons and myelin to alter some ingrained habits of mind or get to the other side of some dominant mental partitions. One altered habit of mind begins with a simple observation. Humans are good at pointing to things and calling their name, but not so good at describing the relationship between things or the repertoires they enact. In some kind of fatal error, the beautiful, soft, watery human organism accidentally assumes a habit of mind that lines up neurons according to litigious logical proofs or religious monistic beliefs. It's captivated by circular logics and declarations and determinations and solutions and Turing complete worlds and universals and telos and elementary particles. It's so often a mind shaped like a closed loop. A mind that loves being right and having the right answer. You recognize this from the Communist Bunny Rabbit series. And since that loop can't abide contradiction, it lashes out with a binary fight when it's challenged. 
The new right answer kills the old right answer. Bombastic arguments must wipe away the incumbent and establish the new and transcendent. The avant-garde of ideas resembles the avant-garde of combat formation. These are the grisly histories of our humanities. Oscillating between loops and binaries, this stringy, tough mental tissue organizes an unnecessarily violent creature with a limited repertoire of behaviors and limited capacities for addressing perennial problems. Cultures often banging away with the same blunt tools that are completely inadequate to address contemporary chemistries of power, fails spectacularly to respond to issues of climate and migration, it can't understand the first global digital teenage war. It stays in the military economic theater. The wars and chest beating Westphalian sovereignty of nations remain in place as the darlings of history. Homo economicus, who only knows arias about freedom, is allowed to upstage and hold forth. Even dissent adopting the same loop and binary disposition knows what's good for everybody and fights in a world of enemies and innocents. Since, since the world's superbugs and bullies thrive on this oscillation between the closed loop and the binary, it's as, if, it's, as if it's as if there's nothing to counter them, only more ways of fighting and being right and providing the rancor that nourishes them. So medium design may be one way to drop through a trap door and contact a habit of mind on the flip side. And if nothing is right and nothing is new, medium design is ever present in many disciplines. Oncologists follow not the tumor, but the chemical fluctuations in the surrounding tissue. Actors store information in not only the text, but also the interdependent actions to detect the underlying loops and binaries and humans and their institutions is already medium thinking. We already do it. The matrix space present at this different focal length not only touches some of the most consequential global power in the world, but it's also good to think with. It's too big to be in any one place. It's everywhere and nowhere. It can't be assessed as an object with a name or shape, but rather by what we might call disposition, the latent properties that unfold over time and territory, propensities within a context or potentials and arrangement. That disposition, that agency and arrangement, like an operating system or a growth medium, decides what will live or die. So while exceeding an understanding of media in mass communication, medium design, of course, learns from the work of Harold Ennis or Marshall McLuhan, but it, but it also relies on the kind of non-modern thinking that, according to Bruno Latour, um, steps away from hierarchies and ultimates into a space, quote, as vast as China or as little known. It's related to the focus on dispositio, dispositif, disposition, that fascinates Foucault or Agamben or Gilbert Ryle. It's an, it has an awareness of the reverberations of aesthetic practices in cultural networks about which Walter Benjamin or Jacques Rancière write. From J.J. Gibson, there's a sense of the affordance of things. And from Gregory Bateson, a sense of temperament in the interplay of things. It, since it may be difficult to grasp at a moment of digital ubiquity, Bateson also helps in recognizing heavy, lumpy space as information. He observed that a man, a tree, and an ax is an information system. So space doesn't need the screens and sensors of the Internet of Things to animate its stiff organizations. They are already dancing. And in medium design, the logics of problem solving in a reasonable world of norms are also turned upside down. Stock narratives of history or sci-fi futurologies or persuasions about righteous activism and freedom don't make sense. Instead, Trump makes sense, anorexia makes sense, addiction makes sense, joining ISIS makes sense, right answers are mistakes, 
His histories are about things that don't happen, and one deliberately addresses problems with responses that don't always work. So you've always known how to do it, but medium design also brings with it an enhanced ability to detect and take advantage of discrepancy, temperament, latency, and indeterminacy in organization. To assess and manipulate media is almost as if one has to cultivate one's canine mind to perceive in a split screen, to detect the discrepancy between what an organization is saying and what it's doing. So like a dog, you straddle mental partitions that separate the narrative and active. You see things with names and hear humans speaking words like, good girl. But those things can't be comprehended in the absence of a thousand other affective cues and relative positions between things in context. The position of the human relative to the door of the dog bowl, their posture or potential for violence is all being assessed equally with the sound of words and their assigned meanings. And in this split screen, you can turn down the sound on those messages and focus on disposition or on what the organization permits or denies. Or you can even see temperament in organizations, the escalating tensions of a binary face-off or submission, the de-escalating tensions in cooperation, the reciprocal relationships in one-to-one -one interplay. In the split screen, it's easier to see how the superbug works. The world's power players and bullies have an appetite for the fight, for more overt perennial violence that tirelessly oscillates between the loop and the binary. They are the one and only. And any contradiction is not only expelled, but also tracked down and destroyed. But they're also masters of the split screen. They know how lies work. They know that telling one lie is a bad idea, but telling many lies works very well. One lie calls for reconciliation and truth. Many lies creates a Teflon surface on which rationality slips and slides. So in medium design, reasonable things, the usual earnest manifestos and master plans and right answers are easily outmaneuvered by unreasonable politics. Just like telling one lie is a bad idea, being right is a very bad idea in medium design. It doesn't work against gurus and totalitarian bullies and other bulletproof forms of power. It feeds the superbug and it doesn't have any Teflon. It's too weak. And while histories are structured around observable events, medium thinking detects and manipulates latent potentials in the absence of event or declaration. Glass doesn't have to break to possess a brittle disposition. The ball doesn't have to roll down the hill to possess that potential. So much of the violence in the world takes the form of constant low-level aggression with no gunfire or flag waving, no pyrotechnics of war or other darlings of history. Violence is latent in organizations in the way they concentrate authority or information. They, these are the histories where nothing happens and an activism can make significant changes without event or declaration. So medium design is not about designing right answers and master plans. Their spectacular failures instead inspire different organiz organs of design or different ways to register the design imagination that embrace indeterminacy. Medium design benefits from an artistic curiosity about reagents and spatial mixtures or wiring. It's not about designing a single object, but an updating platform for inflecting populations of objects or setting up relative potentials within them. The forms are active forms, multipliers, switches, governors or other time-released interdependencies, chain reactions, ratchets. But most importantly, these organs of interplay are indeterminate to be practical, not about knowing that, but about knowing how, not about knowing the answer, but about knowing what to do next. Like you can only know how to kiss, you can only know how to tell a joke, you can only know how to land a plane in high wind. 
And these protocols might have more authority as tools of global governance in a world that favors econometrics and informatics. Sometimes it's like making a cross, as you saw here tonight, sometimes it's like making a cross between a novel and an actuarial table or a film and a blockchain. It has a story as well as explicitly, explicit spatial instruction and measure. Sometimes it's less like making a thing and more like having your hands on the faders and toggles of organization or exploiting the powers of these large systems by reaching into time and giant macro organizational strata like the stack. Or maybe it's like being really good at pool where knowing about one fixed sequence won't do any good but being able to see branching networks of possibilities allows you to play longer and add more information to the table. And pool's good because it's surrounded by hustlers and confidence men. The indeterminate or undeclared is also politically agile in a climate of stealth. You can remain in play to respond to the moment when you're outmaneuvered. And sometimes without nourishing the bully's craving for confrontation, you can shape those moments of political metastasis and remission, like the moment when Tony Curtis said, I am Spartacus. You can hardly hope to be successful without also mastering the split screen, designing the spatial change as well as the spin that propels it, the irrationality of cute and creepy persuasions that have their own persuasion, precision, the gifts, pandas, rumors, meaningless distractions and other totemic fictions that are so effective in culture. It's the English that you put on the ball. And like a really good pool player, you don't necessarily call your shots, but rather keep them guessing. It would be like being too smart to be right. Thank you.